Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. And today's game up on the tabletop is Rome in a Day by Alley Cat Games. Uh, this is a two to five player game that takes roughly about 15 to 30 minutes to play and is for ages eight and up. And in the game Rome in a Day, basically what happens is it is the fall of the Roman Empire and it is now time for all of the rest of the civilization to divide up the land. You are one of these civilizations and so you are going to be dividing up land as well. Uh, you're going to be basically starting with a hidden board as well well as land tiles and a card that has unique buildings on it. And you're going to be doing this I pick you choose type of a game where you're going to select a certain number of these tiles here, divvy them up, and then let your opponent choose one of the stacks. You'll get the other one and you'll steal one from your other opponent and then you're going to place out your land tiles to create your new territory. Creating territory is important based on how you choose to utilize your buildings and you're trying to create building structures on and next to tiles of the same color. And at the end of the game, after a certain number of rounds, you'll score points and whoever has the most points is the winner. It's a simple style tile land game with a unique I pick you choose type of mechanic. Let's talk about it. To set up the game, the first thing you do is you decide how many players are playing. In this case, I have a two player setup for you. Each player is going to be getting their own unique divider as well as their own character color. I have blue here and I have green. Then you're also going to be getting two of these cards here. These are the which pile or am I going to take tile cards. Uh, there's a dark blue one for the larger set of tiles and a slight blue one for the smaller set. You're also going to give each player one of these cards here. It's the yellow and red ones. These are the ones that have on one side taking something, on the other side giving something. You're also going to get a unique building card here. These building cards are basically going to have a number of different buildings on them. There's two set, uh, four sets of two, and then a value on the bottom for gems, which is how you're going to determine scoring in the game. When you get one of these at random, you'll flip it over, and based on the building's uh, colors on the cards, you'll be taking the buildings of that color and placing them down onto the card here. You should always have eight buildings, and the color is dependent on the card. Give each player four of these gems here, and then give every single player their deck of tiles. Make sure that they're shuffled up and selected and set next to each player. After that, you're basically ready. You've got your cards, your buildings, your tiles, your gems, and your hidden board. Well, how do you play? Playing Roman a day is as simple as setting it up. In the game, there are four rounds, and in each round there are four phases which are taken simultaneously, meaning that both you and all of your opponents will all do these phases at the same time and end at the same time. The first phase of the game is exploration. Exploration is pretty simple. You're going to take your stack of tiles here, you're going to reveal them one at a time, uh, going from left to right, creating a set of five tiles. After you have your row here, you're then going to take your top two buildings and place them on the leftmost tiles, one for each. Beep, beep. And after you've done that, you'll see that you have five tiles with two buildings on them. Everybody else should also do the same. And that's the end of the phase. The next phase is going to be division. And division is pretty simple. You'll take your screen here and you'll hide the tiles. And then you're going to determine how many tiles for each side. You'll have two separate sets of tiles and you can do the division any way you want. One to four, two to three, uh, zero to five if you want. And you'll organize them so you have two sets. And hopefully you're probably gonna wanna select at least one of the buildings on one side maybe, and one on the other to begin the game. It'll differ as the rounds go on, but you wanna get buildings for sure. After you have selected your different sets, and hopefully your opponents have done that too, you are then going to reveal, and you're going to add a gem of your type um, of one of your little blue gems to the smallest side. So in this case, if I have a three to two, the two is gonna get the gem. Or if it was a four to one, the one would get the extra gem. Gems are used for bonus points if you have a lot of them at the end of the game. So you have to make sure not to give too many people too many gems because they can start scoring extra points. Then, after you have done the division aspect, uh, there's going to be the selection phase. It's kind of an I pick, you choose. Uh, depending on how this card looks in the game, you'll see this, this yellow side and this red side, it's going to be positioned for each round and it will change. You'll be flipping it, um, going from one way to another, but one of your opponents, either to your left or right, will take one of the sets of tiles that you have set aside. Then you're going to keep the other one. Additionally, your opposite opponent, you are going to take from them and you're gonna get a set of their tiles. So in this case, if I had, if they had, I don't know, these three tiles here and these other three tiles here, and then there's a gem here, and let's say that somebody took this one from me, I could then choose a set from my opponent to take, and I could take these guys here along with the gem. 
And so you'll be left with two different sets of tiles, maybe not the same amount of tiles as everybody else, but everybody should have the two sets, one that was not taken from them and the one they took from the other player. As rounds go on, you'll be flipping this little, this little card over and thusly it'll change. Instead of taking from here, I'll take from here and they'll take from me. And then that's it, the selection phase is over. And then the last, the last phase of the game is the expansion phase. This is where you're going to take your gem and put it back into your supply if you've got any. And then you're going to set up your board. You're going to set up your tiles. And the tiles are pretty simple. It's basic tile laying rules where you have to make sure that each one has a side that connects. You can connect them in any way, shape, or form as long as the uh, end meets another end of the tile and you're going to place them down on the grid, whether it be your starting grid or if it's already been placed, you have to make sure that it's attached in some way. The reason why you do this is because of scoring at the end of the game. Basically how scoring works is buildings are the only things that will score you points for your locations. Each of the buildings has a color and each of the different tiles here has a color. You will score points if the building that you have is on top of the same color tile as the building itself. And you will score points for each adjacent tile around your building that is the same color and any additional tiles that connect to those tiles. So for instance, if I had a building on top of a white tile and it was a white building, that'd be one point. And then if adjacent to that tile, there was another white one, another point. And then if there was a string of three more, that would be three more points totaling up to five. They must be connected to at least the adjacent tiles in order to score you points. They can't just be anywhere on your board. And you'll do this for every single building that you have at the end of the game. And that's basically it. That's how you play the game. There are four phases, then you rinse and repeat, you'll take out the next five, and of course the difference is that you're going to be taking and giving to the opposite players as you go back and forth. But after the fourth round, you'll score. You'll score for all the buildings that you have, and then you'll also score for every single one of these gems here. At the bottom of your building card, it will tell you how many points you get. If you have two gems, you're going to score six points, and if you have eight, you'll score 31. Add up all the points, whenever I have the most points is the winner of the game. Rome in a day. Yeah, pretty simple, right? All right, so Rome in a day. But before we get started, there is a caveat. You see these two cards here that I talked about at the beginning of the game? During the selection phase, instead of just taking one of these sets, you're actually going to play a card down along with everybody else. And then you're going to reveal that card at the same time. The dark blue means you get the larger set of tiles, and the lighter blue one here lets you get the smaller set and as you can see, there's also a gem there, which means you're always going to get the gem as well. This is one of those things where you can take it or leave it. It's one of those extra little hidden knowledge things that prevents your opponents from knowing which of the tile sets you're going to be taking as the rounds move on. Okay, so this is an I pick you choose game. I pick the two different sets secretly, I reveal them, and then you choose one. I get the other. And I do the same for my other opponent. I take one of theirs. I'm left with two sets of tiles that I combine to try and create the best possible tile set to score me the most amount of points. There are a variety of ways to score points in the game, but it's all pretty much the same as how you're supposed to kind of want to do it. You always want to have the tiles uh, adjacent to the buildings of the same color. And you always want those to always try and be connected in some way, shape, or form if possible. Now remember that because tiles are randomly placed on these uh, building areas, these locations here, you're not always going to get the exact building with the exact color tile. But that's fine because the adjacent tiles uh, and anything connected to them also works as well. It's just an extra bonus point if they happen to be on the same exact tile as you can see on my example here. You're trying to basically collect a number of gems to score you a number of points. Having too little can be disastrous, and uh, having not enough of these tiles here can be disastrous as well. Whereas sometimes a good deal might seem good up until you realize that you can't use most of the tiles because you have no building to score the points with. You're trying to create a variety of gems and your location. You want to have the riches and the land at the same time, but it's not possible because everybody else is gunning for the same thing. Now, it's a little bit of a solitary game as to how you build your own little location, but what comes unique to this game is the fact that you're always taking from other people and they're always selecting and allowing you to decide. And depending on the player that you're giving to will determine how you set your tile sets. If I know, for instance, that you have a lot of a certain color tile, and let's just say that I have these five here, Let's say that I know you have yellow and you want yellow, and now I've got three here. Well, what I can do is I can put two on one side and one on the other, and now you can select the three, which is more, or you can take the two yellow, which I know you most likely will because it will score you more points. And if you select just the two, you're losing out on a tile, but you are getting more benefit. 
But in this case, maybe the red and the, the green one will help me more than you. So you have to decide how you want to separate these tiles based on your opponent and what you think they want based on the buildings that they have or the buildings that they want to get. It's a light game. It's a simple game. It's a kid game. It's a kid family friendly style game. You can play this with any type of gamer that you want. It's pretty straightforward and simple and it's pretty quick. You run through the four rounds pretty fast, roughly plays in about 20 minutes. And it's all very accurate as to what you think it does and how it plays and what the end result is going to be, which is usually a pretty close game. It's always going to be fairly close as far as the scoring goes. And they have this nice pad that illustrates uh, the different players that can be playing one to five or two to five, I should say, and the different buildings and of course the amount of gems you have and whoever scores the most is the winner. It's light and fun and friendly and I enjoy this type of game. I think the only negative to this game is it might be too light for some people. If you're looking for a more in-depth type of a game that involves a lot of construction and like tile placement, um, then this is probably not going to be your bag. If you like a light, simple, I pick you choose with an element of selecting from different players and creating a little tableau, then you're going to enjoy this one. It's a great filler game. It's straightforward and it's something that you can teach within minutes. It's really, really easy. And it's also got some really great components. All the different types of pieces are wooden, all the buildings here, all the tiles are double thick and nice. And you're not going to be uh, having to worry about them weakening or dampening or, or bending or anything like that. And the artwork is pretty as well. All the different tile locations look nice and are appealing and, um, it's all very set out and straightforward. Even on the back of this little player aid here, it explains all the phases of play and how you score and how many points you get for your gems, in addition to the card here as well. So you're never gonna have an issue with trying to figure out how to play this game. You're always gonna know. And it's also just very simple. Throw out the tiles, then organize them and add a gem. Somebody takes one, you take somebody else's, and then you place them down into a grid and score as many points as you can and after four rounds you win. I like those type of games. It's a great filler game. I'm gonna keep this game. I enjoy it. Roam in a day. If you're interested, there's a link down below. Thank you guys for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Roam in a Day. If you're interested, there's a link down below, like I just said. And of course, if you want, and if you think we've earned it, you can hit that subscribe button and the bell notification button as well, so that you can see more of our videos that come out every day, Monday through about Thursday right now, as well as the live stream on Sunday at 6.30 p.m. PST, where we play a bunch of different games just like this one here. And if you'd like, there's an Instagram. We do different reviews of different games that are not just the ones on our, our YouTube channel. And of course, our website, unfilteredgamer.com. Blog posts, giveaways, Kickstarter lists, and more. All right, guys, that's all you got for me this time. And as always, I look forward to building Rome once again in a day with you next time.